Uh, how are you doing? Welcome to the McSherry Studio, uh, the art studio at the edge of the old world here in uh, Dublin, in Ireland. And it's uh, lovely to see you. I've got my old Irish hat on because it's very cold in this studio. Um, winter's really begun to set in now. Probably not the kind of winters you'd have in the States, but um, nevertheless, it's kind of damp. It gets in on your bones. A lot of people ask me about uh, um, ways to make their paintings more painterly, uh, and uh, especially uh, in terms of oil painting, but it really applies to any kind of painting, acrylics, uh, watercolours and everything. You should stop trying to be so uh, specific and accurate because it actually doesn't leave much room for yourself in there. And it's also kind of drags you backwards, really. Impressionistic. It's more enjoyable, I find. So uh, what I'm going to do is give you, this is the third exercise uh, in this series of uh, uh, ways to help you improve in your oil painting. Uh, and this one is going to be based on painting a very small painting with a large brush. Okay, so that'll stop you getting down into detail. You've got to cope with uh, the, the size of this brush in relation to the size of the canvas. Uh, and also because the canvas is small, it's my philosophy that if you uh, paint small, you can paint more often, you get the practice more often, and you'll, you'll uh, improve very quickly. So this brush, just to explain it, this is called a short, flat, bright, oblique. So I mean, it's, it's quite technical sounding, but it isn't that technical really. It's just got a kind of a, uh, a, a bias on the, uh, the end. You can buy them there straight across like chisels. Uh, and they're the ones I most often use. I just didn't have one to hand today. So uh, it's about an inch, okay? And this canvas is five inches by seven, okay? So that will give you uh, an idea of what to get. You know, don't go much bigger than that. Uh, you keep your brush kind of large and you can, you know, you've got a blade there, you know, so you can do a, a wide stroke. Uh, you could actually even turn it around and do a kind of a narrow stroke and then you've got a point really. Even if the, the thing was chisel shaped, if the brush was chisel shaped, you'd still have a couple of points. Can't really do much with that edge, but you can with that, okay? So uh, it's not as hard as you think. And the whole idea is to stop you getting down into detail. So don't worry about not getting down into detail. Uh, that's what this is about. Paintings are meant to be viewed from afar. Okay, so uh, why don't we get started? And you'll see what we're going to paint and uh, how we'll take it through to completion uh, in short order, because it's such a small painting. And at the end of it, I'll show you where you can access the other exercises uh, that, that are doing the same thing. Okay, I'll just adjust my hat and let's get on with it. Okay, so uh, just to explain the, the colours that are on my palette, I've got uh, titanium white. Well, in fact, this one is flake white hue. Um, it's very similar to titanium white. Normally I use titanium white, but I found this in my box. It'll do the same job. It's just as, uh, as effective as the uh, titanium white. Uh, Cadmium yellow pale hue, permanent rose, cobalt blue, ivory black. I won't be using very much or if at all uh, any of uh, ivory black uh, for this painting, I don't think. Maybe a little. Uh, and burnt sienna. Uh, so essentially based on the, uh, the printer's palette, uh, the four color printer's palette, loosely based on it, but uh, that's why it works so well. Um, and if you want to know more about that, I'll put a link up to uh, um, an explanation of uh, how this works. Or you can go to mcsherrystudio.com to my uh, classes page and you can buy yourself a little uh, ebook. It'll give you a, a, a lifetime of uh, ability to, to paint true colours. Um, Burnt Sienna just for drawings and um, wash. Okay, so we've already got a wash on this. Start out with the drawing, so I'll use a little bit of Burnt Sienna. Um, and let's put that, a mark across there and there's the descending side of the hill there there's a, a bit of a of a headland over there in the distance and we've got here so I would say in these kind of uh, uh, paintings if you're painting and I'm painting a photograph uh, of, of the Mediterranean scene uh, that you should be painting as quick as possible because if you were there you'd be very very hot if you're in the states of course i don't know what it would be like probably some parts of california i would expect 
but it almost gets unbearable, the heat and the, the sun becomes blinding. So uh, you, you have to sort of really uh, accelerate your painting and hence painting with a large brush and getting a more uh, impression, you know, impressionist painting than a, a super accurate one. The joy of this is painting outside, you know, meeting people, uh, getting something done and uh, not finishing it in the studio necessarily. We can do that if you want, but uh, there's really no need for it. Let's put in a, a, a few marks for where the rocks might be. And that essentially is the uh, composition. So it's going to put in a, a few sort of indications of how the, the water is lapping the shore there. Okay. Clouds can be sort of done later on. So I'm going to start out with the dark. So I always start out with the dark. So to get a nice chromatic dark, it's burnt sienna and blue. You don't use black for kind of these kinds of things. I explain that in other videos. Blacks are very harsh, like pure white is very harsh. You don't really want it in your painting. So let's put that in there and then like this dark in there, uh, it's dark around about there too, there, mostly dark, bit of a dark in the middle of that one there. Okay, clean my brush down. Next thing, I think I'll put in the, the foliage, all that greenery that's there. So to make a green, yellow and blue, but it makes a very kind of uh, acidic green. So we're going to put in a little bit of red for that, a bit more yellow there, a bit more red. And the point is with a, a painting like this, you're really telling a story. You're not getting down into uh, absolute details, hence the very large brush on the small canvas. It doesn't allow you to get into those that, that level of detail uh, that you might otherwise be forced into by the photograph because the photograph is demanding that you copy it and you don't want to, to do that too much okay so let's put in some green there green there it kind of comes down a little bit there there that eminence of the tree there uh, and And kind of here as well. It's very dark on the uh, uh, on the screen at the moment, but uh, it's, it's very difficult to get the color balance right on these uh, with these cameras. At least I can't. I'm not a videographer, right? So uh, let's put in the rocks now. As again, I'm I'm, uh, I'm saying that we're telling a story. We're not just copying. So we're telling a story of heat. At least I am in this occasion. So make a, a lovely sort of bright orangey color as if the sun is really splitting the rocks okay let's put that in there like that there down there rocks spilling out into the sea there if you do do get a chance to go to the med you should it's really very lovely and here in you know, cold, damp Ireland, you know, could do with a, a few spells out in the sunshine. That's our go-to place. And uh, <laughs> my wife is French, you know, so at least uh, we can talk to the, at least the, the, the French who are native to the, uh, the Mediterranean region. Right, let's move on. Let's move on to that headland that's in the distance. So let's get, grab a little bit of blue and red and white and you get this kind of um, violety violet kind of color and I'm just going to mix in some of the green because there's just a vast body of air between us and that uh, that headland I'm going to knock it back into the distance but it would still have a kind of a green tinge even if it is slightly purplish so let's put that in there and now the sky Blue and white. Let's keep it simple. Very often I do pink skies. Now, you notice that the uh, uh, 
the Impressionists, they all played with uh, their skies and well, they played with everything, but uh, just to have a look at their skies next time you see a Monet or a, a, a Cezanne, well, Cezanne was, was kind of extraordinarily different from reality. Okay, so we've got a blue here. I'm going to put that in. Put it in there. Large brush, can't get down into details. Let's shape that tree a little. This is just another exercise to, to, to help you loosen up. Okay. And of course the sea reflects downwards onto the onto the ocean, slightly darker and slightly greener. So put a bit of yellow into that, makes a bit more blue into it. And let's push that there. I've left a little bit of a an area for the for the the, the clouds. It's very di difficult to uh, to paint and talk at the same time. I find. <laughs> now let's do some of that sand. And the sand is uh, kind of a a warmish, reddish, very pale. I suppose you'd call it a grey, really. But uh, so let's add yellow, uh, red, and white together, and let's add a little bit of blue, a bit more white. Kind of get a sandy colour there. Just loosen it up with just a touch of solvent, okay? And I'm going to put that in along here. Now the sand that we can see in this photographic reference is uh, it's all under a slight bit of water so there's still some reflection going on okay so I'm not going to meet those up uh, yet I'm going to now add those two together the, this, this is the sea and the sand which is a logical thing to do isn't it because uh, you see some reflection of the sky and you can still see through to the sand so it's slightly darker slightly bluer I'm going to that there like that okay let's push that up there so I'm not uh, deviating from these this brush the brush is still the same brush now those clouds I never do white clouds white as, as I said is harsh so always mediate it with something so I'm going to I like doing these kind of pinkish clouds you know, they, that's what you get down in those areas. So pink, uh, so uh, white, a little bit of blue, a little bit of permanent rose, and a little bit of yellow, and then more white. You get, gives yourself a nice pinkish cloud, okay? This is a warm country, and you get these lovely shimmering areas notes in the sky so let's shape that headland a little very difficult to do because i'm uh, using a very large brush which is what this exercise is all about got to keep reminding ourselves about not getting into detail let's get some clouds in there it be such a small canvas too so that is my blocking in done Okay, let's clean the brush down. Now, let's see what we can do as far as details are concerned. I'm going to do some more with the vegetation. So back to uh, blue plus yellow plus a little bit of red. A bit more yellow in there so we can get a little bit of variation in there. Okay, and then let's put some of that in. So just put yourself some strokes in. You don't need to be specific. Put in some strokes. Join that up. And there we go, in that tree there and in that tree there. I'm having to hold off on just 
just using the point of the of the of the brush to put in variations. Now, if you had a small brush, you'd be able to go right in close. You don't want to do that. But okay. So we're painting into those blocks. Uh, the, the the blocking in stage it carries the weight of the entire painting. You're, all you're doing is putting details into those blocks. Let's lighten up some of the and just make it a bit redder in those rocks. Close that gap up. Make sure you've got enough paint. You load up your brush, and that means you can leave the paint on rather than brush it on. You don't want to be brushing the paint on. You know, with little strokes like that. No, you just want to load up your brush and dab. You know, dab across there. Okay. And even on the far shore here, there. Okay. Now let's lighten up some of those looks. Put some white into the uh, a bit more yellow. So we're still we're still telling the story of uh, heat, blazing sunshine. Let's move some little dabs into the to those rocks around here. Dab there, maybe a dab there. Okay. Now we're going to put, put in some darks. So I might actually just grab some a little touch of ivory black, add a bit of red and a bit more blue into it. So we'll get a, a, a dark kind of purplish color. I can put in a few dabs around there for the rocks. Close that up. You just got to give an impression that there are all these sort of uh, undulations. You're not going to paint the actual rocks. You're just going to put in dabs to to give the impression. Hence impressionism. There you go. And maybe even oh, just a little bit on the headland. We don't need to be too specific here because it's far away. We want to keep it far away. So very little detail. And now let's put in some reflections in the water. So let's grab some of that green and the dark uh, that I made for the darker areas of green. And I'm going to reflect that down here, which is essentially a reflection of the, what's above the tree and all the vegetation. Just a little bit so that it's in there. Okay, join that up a little bit. Grab a little bit of the rock colour. I'm just going to put in an indication of the undulation in the water, which to me is slightly reddish looking. It's probably reflecting back at rocks and along here. Just give an indication that there are ripples coming into shore. And then I can grab some. light sky color and maybe put some some of that in because some of the water will be turning around and reflecting the sky it'll be oriented towards the sky and some of it will be oriented towards the land okay let's grab a little bit of yellow and put it in that blue and put in a few strokes there loosen that up push that up a little bit let's go back to the sky make a bit more sky color there and we can sort of shape the tree a little bit a bit more you give it a few kind of angular strokes. Let's put some in here as well. A 
don't spend loads of time on the clouds. You don't need to. It's just an exercise in loosening up. Let's see if we can put in some lighter C here. Just want some variations in there. Maybe here as well. And grab some more white, put it in to the sky. The water is reflecting lots of stuff around you. This gives the impression of the undulations in the water. Now let's put in uh, some tree trunks because you just need to indicate that they are there. So uh, let's get some burnt sienna and blue. Maybe yes, let's make them a bit more red. Put some permanent rose into there. Okay, and let's not overdo the description of the trunks. Put in, we're using the blade of the brush now. Just give an impression that there are chunks of trees and we can put in some darks in there as well. I think I might just finish by just adding a little bit of white to the, the sand colour and bring some more variation in there. Can't get down to detail, big brush. I'm going to put in a little bit of description around here just because it, it helps the rocks to look more solid. Yeah, I'm not painting the actual rocks, I'm just painting an impression of the rocks that are there. We're using the very tip of the, that brush. Maybe just see if I just move that in there. Well, one thing I've noticed is that I just want to shape that uh, faraway headland a little. And add a little bit of sky colour onto that purple, just to, I want to knock it back a little bit there. That's one thing. Okay, and just grab a little bit more of that pink. Put a bit of white into it. Like a shape. Shape that down a little bit, push it away, make it slightly smaller. a few stabs around there. Okay. Push that up into there and I think I'm, I'm done really for this exercise. It's a small, so what I'll do now is I'll, I'll change camera and show you. I'll, I'll do a, um, you can get a close up, and see the way the dabs are and everything. So that's it. That's um, another way for you to loosen up uh, in your painting. Big brush, small canvas. So that's the, uh, the exercise number three in the loosening up series that I'm doing. Uh, there's the painting there. Uh, now, I mean, according to which camera I'm using, sort of, uh, it'll kind of uh, probably have an influence on the color, but uh, uh, so if you want to know about the actual palette that I'm using, if you want to know more about it and how, uh, how to use a palette that actually gives you the widest gamut of true colors, uh, you can read more about it uh, on an ebook that I produce. It's on my website. It's available on my website. Read it, absorb it. Uh, depending on where you are, I mean, the the, the color set I'm using is uh, for, from a particular brand that we get a lot in Europe. Uh, but I'm sure you can find colors that uh, act in the same way where you are. 
and they're based on the printer's colors, the four color process colors. I am a former printer, so that's where I learned my color theory. Uh, and it works. And once you've absorbed that and start to, to use it more often, depart from it. You start using all the colors that you want, but uh, uh, it's good to have a good grounding in color so that you know that you'll be able to uh, get what you want. So uh, thank you very much for uh, tuning in and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. So uh, you know, do subscribe. Uh, if you haven't already, and do comment. It's really great to hear uh, your comments and questions from me uh, uh, about anything to do with painting. No, do ask, because uh, I'll, I'll follow them up. Um, and what else? I can't think of anything else. <laughs> I never do these things scripted. They're completely off the cuff. So uh, I hope you don't mind that. So listen, I'll see you the next time. Take care of yourselves and uh, paint oils, paint small and paint often. Bye.